So hello everyone and welcome to today's Info Hour. Uh, today we will be talking about the Estonian model of United Nations, specifically the UNHCR committee. Uh, my name is Martin and today I'm representing the Estmond team. So let's start with what is Estmond and other MUNs around the world. So the model of United Nations is an educational role play where you will be assigned the role of one country. It's important for you to remember that you will be representing a country and not your personal opinions. Uh, it is a personal experience that is highly valuable. Uh, personally, the model of United Nations was what it, um, told me what I was meant to do and what I was, what I wanted to study in university. So you will get to meet a lot of people from high school and different universities around the world. Uh, also, the Yes Moon, our event, it's an entry-level simulation, which means that don't worry if you're not experienced. Uh, there's a lot of people that it's their first time UN, so we are always open to, to give you feedback and to help you to become better at it. So our working language will be English, uh, and there are different formats every year. So there has been media, historical committees, like the uh, Security Council in, during the Cold War, and ICJ, which is the International Court of Justice. So if you want to learn more about it, you can enter mindmacob.ee and you can read about it. So the ESMUN 2021 conference, it will be happening on the 10th of June to 13th, and it will be happening in Tamsalo Gymnasium in case we do it physical or online. There will be five committees. We will also have the United Nations General Assembly where we get together all of the committees into one big room. Uh, and we debate and we like we have a big group conversation. Um, the working in committees, uh, we will represent different and real United Nations delegations. Uh, we will have formal and informal debates. Uh, our objective is to find a consensus between the people. Uh, we will be writing resolutions for the different problems that we might encounter. And there will be some articles written also in the media team. Uh, in the end, it is all about socializing, meeting people, and most importantly, having fun. So the ESMOON 2021 will be hybrid, physical, or online. In reality, we are still making the decision, and we will let you know next week. Uh, these scenarios can depend uh, based on what the Estonian government has to say about the situation with the pandemic. And all the necessary information and support will be provided to you. We will make sure to provide you with all of the information. Of course, the safety of our participants and for of our of ourselves, the organizers, it's our main priority. And yeah, you one really important thing to remember is that there is not maximum limit of, of participants from one school, which means that we can have as many as participants that want to come from one school. The only requirement is for you to be motivated and engaged. So ESMON 2021 committees, we will have the UNFCCC or COP, the Conference of Parties of the United Nations Framework Convention on Climate Change. So really focusing on climate change and environmental issues. ICJ, the International Court of Justice media team will be representatives of international media outlets, uh, the UNSC or the United Nations Security Council and the UNHCR, this committee, which is the United Nations Higher Commissioner for Refugees or Refugee Agency. That's the way we call it now. So the committee info hours are happening this whole week and the recordings will be available in YouTube, in my Macaul, YouTube. So the conference rules for COP, UNC and UNHCR. Uh, it's always remember, always remember to wear a business attire, so formal attire. There will be voting procedures which means it will be organized. Um, there are different types of debates. We will have speakers list, which means that the, the chairs will give you, will put you on the, on the time whenever you want to speak and you will have a specific moment in time to speak. There is a moderated caucus where the uh, delegates take the lead and they moderate the debate and then moderated caucus when we stop being formal and we can get together and talk in, in a less formal manner. There will be points and motions to making uh, different decisions and different points that you want to point out. Uh, there, remember to use the terminology that is accepted by the United Nations. Also, always be respectful and polite to others. We are here to make consensus, not to create more problems. Um, also important to remember that our chair, us, ourselves, the chairs, we are the mediators 
and you, the delegates, will be giving the main role. So you are the ones that will be driving the debate. We are only giving you the tools in order to do so. Um, and yeah, all of the information will be provided through the info packs that we will be sending promptly. So specifically about the United Nations Refugee Agency, our topic is empowering refugees through technology. And our aim is to improve refugees living standards through the implementation of new and adaptive technologies. You, the delegates, will be able to formulate and plan the implementation of innovative, innovative technology-driven solutions for the betterment of refugee living standards. So the committee chairman is me, myself, Martin Peñarrea, uh, and Daniel Yarkin Yusef. Uh, perhaps you would like to give a, a brief introduction of yourself, Daniel? Sure. Uh, thank you. Uh, so me and Martin are going to be chairs. Martin is going to be the um, uh, direct, uh, director chair, like the main uh, principal chair of the committee, and I will be the co-chair, and we will be helping you, uh, as Martin uh, suggested, uh, we will be helping you with the um, communication, how the quorum has to uh, proceed, and with the general rules of the whole uh, conference. And um, I started MUN uh, at least uh, like six or seven years ago uh, during high school. And uh, I've been enjoying it specifically because, uh, first of all, it made me uh, expand my network, uh, meet new people, make new friends, and uh, even make some um, work-related uh, connections with uh, some people. But uh, beyond that, it actually expanded my horizon about uh, what I could uh, achieve in terms of international relations. Um, what I, what I know about uh, international diplomacy and politics and how to find solutions for uh, different kinds of um, uh, topics for, for, the, um, for the subjects that could be uh, useful for, uh, for example, fighting with climate change or uh, finding solutions for refugee crisis and uh, so on. So, Mm, I really like uh, MUN conferences, and uh, me and Martin, we're going to uh, try to help you with uh, your uh, experience with UNHCR. So please, Martin, go, go on. Thank you, Anna. So one thing I forgot to mention at the beginning is that this meeting is being recorded. And if you have any questions, you can ask them through the chat or uh, take a note of them and wait for the end of the, of the presentation. We have a special time for you to make questions. So about me, uh, Martin Peñarrera, I'm from Ecuador. I currently study e-governance technologies and services. And with Daniel, we both study in a technological university, meaning that we are really close to this topic that we are doing this year in UNHCR. So before we get into the specifics of the committee, it's always important for you to remember that everything we do in the United Nations, it's driven by the sustainable development goals. Uh, by the end of the United Nations model, you will be really familiar with this, with this chart that you can see right now. And these are the goals that the United Nations set for us in 2015 uh, in order for us to achieve in, by 2030. And they, they made this decision based on the fact that if we don't improve all of these topics, we will have really hard times and we have all of countries are encouraged to work towards um, getting to no poverty, zero hunger, and etc. So always remember that this is what we're working for. So the history of the UNHCR. So in 1951, the UNHCR was uh, created by the Statute of International Protection of Refugees. Uh, since then, the UNHCR has been an instrument for, con uh, for countries to access this um, statute and protect refugees and make consensus of how to protect them. In 1981, uh, the UNHCR won its second Nobel, Nobel Prize for Peace uh, because of its assistance to refugees worldwide. By 2015, the UNHCR has helped 50 million refugees to resettle and be assigned to new countries. And by 2021, uh, they're still assisting 80% of the world's population of refugees uh, under the increased threat by the pandemic. So here you can see some of the work that the UNHCR has. So we, have, we can see the deployment of resources, of water, um, 
the um, regularization of refugees throughout the world and how it works in the in the official side of the UNHCR. So why is the UNHCR important? There are many reasons why the UNHCR is, is important. And because the, the first one would be because the refugees are one of the most vulnerable groups worldwide. Uh, refugees are often over, overlooked and neglected by the governments because they're not their citizens and because they're in a difficult position. Refugees might be included as stateless people who need the recognition. Um, the diplomatic relations be between states can depend on issues about refugees. And because for everyone from every country, it's at the, at the risk of becoming a refugee. There is many reasons for migration and we decided to include some. So there is migration due to climate issues. For example, people that is fleeing their, their countries because they're being flooded by water or because they're the droughts, because there's no water. So climate issues are always important to take in consideration. There is political issues like the situation in Venezuela where there is a political crisis and people need to flee because they don't have food. Uh, and of course, there's other reasons like war and et cetera. Um, yeah, so I know you can take over now. Yeah, thank you. So uh, UNHCR also uh, supports refugees in terms of uh, technological advancements. And there are examples of that uh, in the world. For example, um, as far as I remember, uh, in 2016, um, in a crisis in Africa, they provided, uh, as you can see in one of the pictures, uh, they provided um, uh, VR-related uh, education uh, su uh, support to children uh, for uh, their for making them access uh, easily and um, effectively to educational opportunities. And uh, in addition to that, in the world, in many countries, uh, there are examples of UNHCR supporting refugees with healthcare uh, systems, uh, not to very uh, not in a very detailed or uh, very perfect uh, implementation yet because it's uh, still getting developed, but uh, those are very crucial uh, for the refugees in following areas such as accessibility of the healthcare services and the medicine, uh, which is especially important uh, when the refugees uh, flee from their country uh, for, a, uh, for a war situation and uh, communication during emergency situations because they need to be able to access uh, to uh, emergency services such as uh, the fire department or uh, healthcare services, the ambulance or even the police. So uh, that is why this is also crucial and social integration with local communities is also very important because uh, for the refugees uh, also need to uh, adapt to their environment when they come to a new country uh, because sometimes they're not only staying in the refugee camps, sometimes uh, they might freely move in the country and try to find jobs and um, meet new people uh, to, for their betterment of their life. So uh, this is also, as well as I said before, uh, provide, supported by providing education opportunities. Uh, so moving on to the next slide. Yeah, perfect. And the um martin do you want to talk about that or should i continue uh sure i can talk about it so this okay. year estmon is participating in the international uh, refugee challenge uh this means that the actual unhcr is encouraging us to take part into this challenge and there is multiple reasons we should do that so yeah the best resolutions for from our unhcr uh, committee will be forwarded to the actual units here and in case they are actually discussed we could be we be winning prices and have the opportunity to actually make a change and have our proposals being taken in consideration by policymakers throughout the world so this is our opportunity to make uh, some real change to make this simulation happen in the real life and have have these kind of discussions in the real units here so this is really important for us and i think it's a really cool thing that we are providing this year through uh, Finally, for the preparation for the conference, familiarize yourself with the topics, meaning refugees, meaning um, technology and refugees, etc. Um, decide what is your preference. 
decide what committee do you want to go to. Uh, remember to apply. We will be sending you your the link for you to apply. Read the info pack that we will be sending you promptly. Uh, prepare for work and we'll see you there. Now, if you have any questions, you can make them now. Nope, I hope then everything was clear. Uh, maybe, I know, do you want to make some questions to the to our participants? Sure. Um, I would just uh, direct my questions to everyone. And uh, if you'd like to answer them, uh, you can either send uh, as an email after spending some time on them, or you can just uh, answer them here on the chat. And one of my questions is, um, uh, what would you uh, actually expect from uh, the UNHCR committee this year, uh, from Estman, to give you some uh, improvement about uh, your knowledge or your uh, participation? So, uh, for example, that could be, uh, as an answer, just I'm giving an example, for example, like, uh, I would like to learn more about uh, how to make UNHCR uh, even more uh, active uh, in war regions, or I would like to learn more about uh, UNHCR's um, capabilities uh, in the world uh, and even improving them. Uh, so that was the first question. Uh, and the second question I'd like to ask is, uh, is there any incidents or uh, examples of any situation that uh, you've known before uh, that happened around you uh, that UNHCR uh, touched uh, to the people uh, to help them and um, that you can say that, uh, yes, I have seen uh, the active uh, participation of UNHCR in uh, a crisis uh, in anywhere in the world. And my final question would be, um, in which areas uh, that UNHCR doesn't cover uh, as directed on their website, um, as they don't cover, which area would you like them to uh, also be participating in and helping the refugees in terms of that subject? And hopefully my questions are clear. If they're not, please uh, ask me further details. And yeah, that's all from my side. So anyone would like to answer one of the questions or any other question that you would like to make? Well, I hope that uh, our participants are thinking about this. But I would like to ask you, Martin and Anil, uh, share a story about your first experience uh, during MUN. Uh, like, how was it? And why did you go? And how did it go? <laughs> I think uh, I can start. Uh, so the first time uh, I've been participating in MUN was, I think, uh, in 2013 or maybe 2014 uh, with a group of, uh, like a group, as a group of participants. Um, it was a big MUN conference in Istanbul uh, with a uh, delegation like amount of probably 250 in total. And um, it was pretty nice experience, except the fact that I wasn't able to understand totally what was going on around me uh, because I was uh, that was the first time I was learning uh, how MUNs, uh, the conferences work. And um, we also uh, went there as uh, with uh, like as a participating group. Uh, we also had a English teacher that um, was responsible for our English uh, in, uh, in the school. So uh, he tried to help us about what could, uh, what we could achieve uh, from the conference, but uh, he wasn't also very um, knowledgeable about the whole topic. So we were actually learning what the MUN was at the same time altogether. And even though I say that it's, uh, it was kind of confusing for me or uh, I wasn't able to understand everything, uh, I know that I uh, actually uh, got some knowledge and nice experience about the whole MUN conference because at least I learned how it was uh, proceeding, the rules and the cause about what 
MUN is trying to achieve. And I think that is the most important thing because even if you feel like uh, you're shy or you don't want to uh, participate that much, um, you should uh, at least um, try to enjoy uh, about what's going on. And it will eventually help you even uh, to be uh, more active uh, if you wish, or even uh, learn even more uh, from what MUN uh, is doing and what it can do. So uh, if you're interested, uh, you should definitely also participate in the UNHCR and encourage your friends to also participate. And yes, that's all for me. And how old were you, Anil, when you started? Um, I think uh, I was 15, hmm. probably, or maybe 16. Mm -hmm. OK, thank you. And you, Martin? Yeah. Yeah, actually, quite similar story. I started when I was 15. I remember because they were. It was in December. They just discussed the um, the sustainable development goals, and they just approved them. In and I remember that because in the model of the United Nations, they were like, "Okay, we are gonna change a bit the format, and now we have this." So, but it was really cool. I remember I was really shy. I was really bad at, as a delegate. I was really, really bad. It took me, I don't know, a co a couple of conferences to learn. But it was, it's a really cool experience. I got to, ma to meet people from all around my city. Actually, I, li I used to live in a really big city called Quito, over 2 million people living there. And I got to meet people from all over that city, from different schools, from, it was really cool. And that model self served as preparation for me to go to the NHSMUN, which is the biggest model of the United Nations in New York. And yeah, it has been a really great experience for me. Hmm. Okay, thank you. Since both of you are, you come from different uh, countries um, and you joined ESMUN team, um, I think two and three years ago, um, how do you think in Estonia are we organizing a model United Nations in comparison to your country? What's the difference? Um, I could say that um, I think just because of uh, the difference of the population, uh, there are not so many um, conferences comparably to my country, but uh, I think it's still uh, impressive because um, like Estonia as a country uh, doesn't suffer uh, much as far as I know from um, except the climate change and uh, general topics uh, that can be related to climate or uh, can be happening all around the world, but in terms of um, wars and uh, refugee crisis, I don't think it's Estonia is uh, suffering that much. So that's why I would also understand at the same time that Estonia is um, just uh, recently getting developed in terms of uh, MUN conferences. Uh, but I think it's uh, as far as I can understand, the, the organization of MUN conferences and uh, the uh, point of view of the people uh, of, of like related to the MUN uh, organizations, I think they are uh, actually nice. And uh, as far as I can say that it will only increase uh, and it will only develop better. So uh, that is my opinion. So. I'm actually very happy uh, happy of the current situation of the MUN conferences in Estonia. And uh, we can only support it by uh, joining and uh, collecting, encouraging more people uh, to join and creating even more uh, ideas about further uh, conferences or further committees and participating in the organization of the uh, MUN conferences at the same time. So yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. okay, so uh, Martin, you the, can shortly answer, and then you, we have two questions in chat, which is super, while we were yeah, chatting. Yeah, exactly. I was just going to say, I'm going to try to answer both the question that is in the chat and the question that you made. So first of all, why is the UNHCR important? There is 26 million people living in refugee status. So that is 13 times the population of Estonia, almost the double the time the population of Ecuador. So it's a big, big amount of people that it's currently living under uh, lower standards that citizens are used to. And they, they're doing this because they're fleeing different conflicts and they're fleeing uh, things that 
makes them migrate, migrate because their life in their countries or it's 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 not what they want. So they're, therefore they need to move and find a home in another country. Uh, the UNHCR is the attempt of the United Nations, the international attempt of the United Nations to help these people, to help them find their new home, help them find what they're looking for, jobs, stability, fleeing their war. So it's really important to work on this uh, and it's really important the job that the UNHCR has. Now about how is it in Ecuador and how is it in, in Estonia? Well, in Ecuador, I think it's a bit more, we talk about this a lot more again, because of the things that Anil said, uh, we are we have been highly affected by the Venezuelan crisis. You know, we a lot of millions of Venezuelans enter Ecuador, and like it, it is our uh, work to help them and to open our borders and to you know help help people that are fleeing conflict. So, in general, I think the population in Ecuador is a bit more aware of the work of the United Nations because we basically see people from the UNHCR not every day, but every time a month, we can see trucks from the UNHCR helping people to get through the border of Ecuador and et cetera. So, yeah. And there is another question, uh, how you will be able to join? Well, you will need to apply, right, Victoria? You will need to apply, and then we will give you all of the information necessary in the info box. Uh, yes, that's true. So first of all, apply, and then, and then, um because we said we are going to get, make this decision about online or hybrid um, format this week. Um, the question came from a really far away country. So I would say that uh, probably uh, people from other countries will be able to participate online uh, because of the COVID situation. It's not really realistic that we will um, be able to travel, but it's still something that we are deciding. So if you're interested, the first thing you have to do is apply and then we will get in touch with you and we can discuss your personal situation about can you travel or not and how are we doing the conference. This is something that we will be debating about uh, in our team this Sunday and we're going to make this decision and then send the information to all of our applicants. We're not going to be sending it all over. So if you apply, you will get this information. So please apply. Yep. Is there any other question you can send it to the chat or feel free to unmute yourself and ask it? And if there is not, I hope that everything is clear. And I think we could call it close the, the meeting if you would like to. Sure. Yeah, thank you.